Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And today's viewer's question is, could you please discuss dual and plural membership? Well, I certainly can, but it comes with this huge caveat that I have seen that these words are not used the same way in every single jurisdiction. So I will explain to you uh, what the words mean here in Mississippi, uh, but the definitions may differ slightly wherever you are. So uh, be cautious if you're proceeding on your own. <laughs> Uh, here in the state of Mississippi, uh, dual membership means that you have membership in more than one Mississippi Lodge. So whichever lodge you were originally a member in, and rather than go into a, a great lengthy explanation, let's just presume that you were initiated, passed, and raised in the same exact lodge. So you are a Master Mason in Lodge A but you find yourself very interested in another lodge. Maybe that lodge is more closer to your work. Maybe uh, your shift changes at work and so only half the time you're able to go to one lodge, but if you went to this other lodge, you'd be able to go to them the other half of the time. And so you want to be a member of both of these lodges, what, whatever the reason might be. For example, I myself am a dual member. My home lodge is Longstreet Lodge, and I'm a dual member of the Mississippi Lodge of Research. Uh, so that's a dual membership. Now, let's say uh, I live very close to the border of Alabama. And let's say I got interested and involved in a lodge over in Alabama, and I want to become a member there. Here in the state of Mississippi, that would be considered a plural membership. So it's membership in more than one lodge where one of the other lodges is outside of the jurisdictional boundaries of the state of Mississippi. So uh, I want to say this a different way just to make it cl clear. Uh, sometimes I've heard dual membership means, well, that means you're a member of two lodges, and plural means it's three or more. Uh, maybe that's the case somewhere else, but not here in Mississippi. If, if I were a member of all 230-some lodges in the state of Mississippi, I would just be a dual member at all of those lodges. But if I was a member of every single one of those lodges and one in the state of Alabama, that one I have in the state of Alabama would be plural membership. So, so that's what that is all about. So uh, some other things for you to think about. Um, usually when you're looking to get dual or plural membership, you're going to need some documentation. Uh, here in Mississippi, you're going to need a couple of different various forms depending on which membership you're seeking and so forth. But uh, generally, it's going to be a certificate of good standing, which is simply a document that's filled out by your lodge secretary that says, yes, in fact, he is a master mason and here's his credentials and here's the seal of the lodge and my signature and he's good to go if he wants to be a member over at your lodge too and it can be that simple. Uh, sometimes there might need to be some other documentation as well, especially if you're going into uh, plural membership. So it's just a little bit extra information going with it. Another thing for you to consider is, uh, of course, making sure that you have fraternal communication with whatever plural lodge uh, using my terminology that you might be going to. So if you're interested in a lodge that's outside of your jurisdiction of your Grand Lodge, uh, it serves you well to make sure ahead of time that that lodge is in fraternal communication. So I happen to already know that Mississippi and Alabama are in fraternal communications, so that means if I did wish to get uh, plural membership over in Alabama, I could. Uh, but chances are that's not going to be a problem for you, but it's something to check into. It's something you should know about ahead of time just so it doesn't become a concern later. There are some other details about dual and plural membership that you should be aware of, but I don't want to drag you down into the details, uh, but give you some ideas. Yes, you will have to pay dues at all these different lodges, uh, so the more lodges you get involved in, the more money you're putting out. It is not that if you have a home lodge you're paying dues to that you can become a member anywhere else and not pay. That's not the way it works. If you want to be a member you're going to pay their dues of wherever you're uh, petitioning to join. Uh, also, should you ever run into trouble with your home lodge, 
uh, such as uh, being suspended for not paying your dues or should you have any sort of uh, action taken against you by your lodge uh, that's going to affect your membership in other lodges as well. Now that doesn't necessarily work in reverse if you're a dual member somewhere and that um, that lodge you're a dual member of takes action against you it may not have anything to do with your home lodge uh, but maybe it will just a lot of variables in place there you might also take into account what the needs of each individual lodge are and what your time availability might be for example if you're serving uh, as a warden or another capacity in two or more lodges, uh, it might become a big burden on your time uh, versus if you're just a member there and you show up when time permits or whether or not you have duties to perform in more than one lodge uh, is something to take into account before you get uh, your head underwater there. I know there's a lot of people out there who are members of many different lodges and, and I don't have any problem with that. I think if you if it, if it means something to you, if you're getting something out of it, uh, then, then go right ahead with it. Uh, I personally, I, I am the kind of like, jump in head first and be fully immersed in something kind of person. If I'm a part of a lodge or any other organization even outside of Freemasonry, I don't want to sit on the sidelines or be in the back seat. I want to be up front and involved and doing things and so I personally keep myself very limited uh, that's why I'm only the member of my lodge and the Lodge of Research even though I love going to all the lodges around me and would be honored to be a part of their lodge but but I know that if I put myself in that position where I say well and let me be a member of this lodge and of that lodge and of that lodge even if I can handle it financially I know I'm going to overwhelm myself because I'm going to want to say yes if they uh, appoint me to a position or if they want to elect me to a position or if they want me to serve on a committee or head a project or be involved in a fundraiser and sooner than not I'm going to find myself violating my obligation because I'm giving too much time to the fraternity and neglecting my family or my work or my other obligations so um, that's personally why I keep myself tuned back but I understand there are plenty of people out there who can be involved uh, full-time in Freemasonry and not uh, run into a problem neglecting their ob other obligations so uh, I personally just recognize my limitations and keep it at that and attend my other local lodges and fellowship with them as often as I can thank you all so much for taking the time to watch we'll see you next time